happening everybody trey here joined by my dad sean and today reactions to the classics we are going to be counting down our top 10 albums of 2020 in our draft style format i got first pick this year and then uh then my dad will get picks two and three and so on so uh looking forward to it man and if you want to check out any of our other previous draft uh lists you can do so uh we go all the way back to the year 1965 so been a long journey and uh we're, we're almost complete yeah and if you're a patron remember we uh we need your help that we're gonna have a live listening party once a month here on youtube so you're gonna get to pick one of these to be nominated for that live listening party if you're not a patron check out our patreon we below the patron link on the end screen, when this thing is over, we appreciate any support you would consider. We put up videos every single day. So, uh, Trey, I see your number one pick, and this is not an album I listen to. All right, man. Yeah, it's going to be Leanne LaHavis right here with her third record, right? And, um, man, I was uh, really impressed whenever I listened to this back in 2020. Um, and it's, uh, it still holds up, in my opinion, and uh, Leanne, very uh, lovely voice right here. And it's uh, able to really blend in um, the, the kind of soul, folk, jazz. Uh, so you, you got a lot of different styles on this. And uh, it's a concept record with a song cycle that depicts the stages of a relationship from early romance to demise. And uh, we got a cover of Radiohead's Weird Fishes oh. on here, which uh, you know I think stands up with the original, actually. Uh, really, really a great cover right there. Seven Times and Please Don't Make Me Cry are also favorites for me right here. But uh, again, um, a UK artist that uh, really is um, you know making, uh, making a mark and maybe not a household name, but uh, a record worth checking out. All right, my number one pick. Now, we started this, as you said, Trey, in 1965. And when we started this almost a year ago, I never thought I'd be uttering these words. No, no, no offense to anybody, but uh, number one pick, Taylor Swift. You're a Swifty over here, Sean. Folklore was going to appear that way after this countdown. <laughs> Eighth studio album. During quarantine, she conceived it as a collection of songs and stories that flowed like a stream of consciousness. Worked with producers, of course, Jack Antonoff, who she works yeah. with all the time. Also works with Lana Del Rey and uh, St. Vincent, many others. And Aaron Dessner from The National, mm -hmm. one of our yeah. favorite bands. She worked with them virtually because we're in the in the stage now. We didn't talk about it, but where so many of these albums were done during quarantine yeah. in different weird ways, right? Departing from the mainly upbeat pop production of his predecessors, it consists of mellow ballads. You got some neoclassical instruments, indie folk, alternative rock. Mm -hmm. Influenced by loneliness during the quarantine, we all we all felt that. Swift yeah. explores themes of escapism, empathy, nostalgia, and romanticism. Um, Upon release, it broke the record for the biggest opening day on Spotify for an album by a female act, which if you see it's 2022, uh, all the sales figures for a new album, it's not yeah. going to surprise you. Best selling album of 2020 in the US. That doesn't mean anything. It also is the best <laughs> album in my opinion, but just because it's best selling. One album of the year at the Grammys, making her the first woman to win it three times. My faves are The One and Exile with Bonnie Iver. Uh, really just Justin Vernon, but he's credited as Bonnie Iver on here. And my second pick. Yeah, I, I just oh, yeah. wanted to know. Yeah, yeah. man, I, I think um, folk, uh, Folklore and Evermore are uh, definitely Taylor's best works as like a, you know, album, you know, well, excellent songwriter. So yeah. uh, I, I, I don't have any, uh, any qualms with uh, your pick. You want to get that like in there? When you, just like when you chose 1989, that was a different story, but hey. Oh, I was going to say, you're trying to get, you know, get some favor with the Swifties, but then you drop that in. All right, my second pick, a guy that I love, my favorite solo artist of all time, Bruce Springsteen, Letter to You, 20th studio album. Only took four days to record. First album be done with the E Street Band since 2014. They blocked off five days. They did it in four. There's a great documentary on, on Apple TV. If you have it, check it out. Recording occurred after a period of writer's block for Bruce, but mm -hmm. he went and visited a friend of his, um, George Tice, or Theus. I don't know how you say his name. Uh, his former bandmate from his very first band. He was the last oh, guy wow. left alive except for Bruce. And so when he died, Bruce wrote this entire album in a week and a half. And it's all about that. It's about death, a lot of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, regret, aging, and dying. And uh, for a guy who's 51, it really hits with me. Features three tracks, though, that were written prior to his debut at uh, Greetings from Asbury Park, which we have a review of that. Oh, but three of these were written way back then. And he mm -hmm. came across them when they were putting together a compilation album and goes, wow, man, I never even put these. Interesting. 88 yeah. on Metacritic. Faves, Ghosts, I'll See You in My Dreams, Last Man Standing in the title track, but 
a very powerful listen if you're of a certain age. Yeah, I uh, I enjoy that record as well, and uh, yeah, shows Bruce still uh, still bringing the heat. Still uh, bringing all these years later. He's a seven year old at that point, and uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the Avalanches for my second pick. We will always love you. Their third record. Uh, I believe all their records have made my list here. The Australian so. electronic duo right here, um, just continuing their um, string of excellent uh, releases. You definitely got a who's who of guest features on here. Everybody from uh, Robert Smith of The Cure to Johnny Marr, MGMT, Denzel Curry. So you got a little bit of everything. Uh, a little bit different um, the way they constructed this album. Um, the the group uh, pioneers kind of of the plunderphonics a movement of taking you know a variety of samples and just uh, from a, you know other tunes and combining it into something right. unique. Uh, they did that a little bit here, but they also added their own instrumentation to uh, you know kind of build the songs a little more easily and quickly instead of having to find a sample for literally every you know right. single thing. I can imagine that uh, was tough. Um, the album's concept is rooted in quote death, the afterlife, the stars, celestial beings, and everything that's out there in the context um, of their tendency to uh, sample music from artists who have died, which I thought was kind of a cool like hey cool. we we take a uh, something from back in the the 50s or 60s and sample it maybe all these musicians are dead at this point and yet their spirit and uh, work kind of lives on even uh all these years later in a, a reimagined form so that's pretty cool uh my favorites are the divine chord and the incredibly catchy music makes me high i listened to this album i just didn't quite get it i appreciate okay. the difficulty of it and the art of it i just didn't quite get it but i did i did listen to it what do you got as your third pick. And my third one is going to be an uh, experimental hip-hop group uh, clipping right here, Visions of Bodies Being Burned, their fourth record. Uh, a lot of industrial, abrasive, kind of heavy type of sound on here. I think clipping are better than Death Grips, uh, who also kind of fit into that right. mold. But uh, really showcases uh, David Diggs' creativity and ability to uh, craft a story. And, uh, um, you know, this is a, a Halloween album, if you've ever heard one. They're all essentially kind of scary. That's from the title, man. <laughs> yeah, type of stories. Uh, a couple of that with the um, you know really dark type of uh, production and uh, you know it's it's uh, one to spend in a, once October rolls around. My favorites are uh, Enlacing and then uh, Say the Name. All right, next up, it's the, it's the year of the ladies for me. I got mm. Phoebe Bridgers, her second album, Punisher, yeah. described as an indie rock, emo folk, and indie folk. Lyrically, it tackles themes of misconnections, the tension between the inner and outer self, and the lonely ache of waiting things to or watching things in that's what she said it's a 90 on metacritic when this album came out a lot of people in the community our, our rttc community was like this is so much better than stranger in the ops and they mm-hmm. loved it and you and i both listened to it and i'm like and yeah it's not better i like stranger yeah. in the ops but as we revisit this stranger in the ops was on your list uh, when it came out mm-hmm. um i actually do think this album is better okay. i don't know if time away from it and because i was so into stranger in the ops has helped me there but kyota and ICU or my face. I mean, it's 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 marginal, right? I mean, which one's better? But uh, a, a tremendous album. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Phoebe. I still prefer the debut to this one, but uh, hey, man, this is a really strong uh, release, and I feel her a super. Uh, or not superstar, but her stardom has a really uh, continued to increase. I like, get into some acting stuff now yeah. more, and so I'll be curious what uh, what direction she goes uh, with her next release, whenever that may be. All right, well, Trey. You heard about her earlier, <laughs> and here she is again, Taylor Swift, back Evermore. Back to back, okay. Ninth studio album, came out only five months after Evermore. It's a surprise release. She said it was a spontaneous product of her extended collaboration with Aaron Desner, who, of course, is one of the producers, mm-hmm. the national guy, on Folklore. She described Evermore as an offshoot of it, and she considers them sister albums, which you could listen to them back to back and not tell much of a difference in them. There's not some sort of difference in style, but I don't feel like Evermore was a leftovers. That's what you yeah. get a lot of times here. I don't, point. I don't feel like that at all. It has alt rock, indie rock, and chamber pop. And you got some finger pick guitars, somber mm-hmm. pianos, sparse percussion. Um, subject matter, she described it as an anthology of tales about love, marriage, infidelity, and grief. American, American kind of continuing on with the, the characters from folklore. Right, I she know just built them to another... When, when that dropped, there was all the all the Swifties diving into how did all those stories and characters Yeah, connect, and, and so. I didn't get into all that because they may not. You know what I mean? They may not. They may, they may not. I don't know about that, Sean. They, they're pretty confident they do. Bonnie Bear, Haim, and The National are featured. We love Bonnie Bear mm-hmm. and The National. I know Haim was in one of your yeah. lists or are going to be our featured. Faves are Willow, Champagne mm-hmm. Problems, which we actually have a song right. reaction of. Banger. To. Evermore with Bonavir and Coney Island with the National. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, 
I, I don't know. Once if we, isn't enough. I'm twice. trying. I'm trying to think. I, I think you'd have to go back to maybe to our '60s list where the Beatles appeared twice, and just because you know most you artists don't, don't yeah, release two records, just of don't ever quality, have it. So never have. Um, no man. So I'm uh, going with uh, my final two picks. Uh, my fourth pick gonna be Mac Miller's six record circles. Um, and uh, again, uh, I, I'm a big fan of his uh, 2018 record, uh, Swimming, yeah. as well. But uh, this is his final uh, record, of course. Uh, he died of a drug overdose in late 2018, but was um, already really uh, kind of deep into working on this. And uh, his buddy John Bryan, a famous producer, uh, kind of took up the uh, the production after his death and got this to, to come together. And um, you know, Mac Miller, of course, coming up as a as a rapper, right? But uh, it, with his previous release to this, Swimming, and then uh, this, uh, Circles, kind of shows him expanding on that. There's still rap elements in here, but I don't know. Uh, there's also some kind of neo-soul, I guess I would say. And, um, you know, listening to it is uh, quite powerful, knowing, you know, how his life ended up, unfortunately. Right. Um, and uh, so, you know, the they were set to be kind of a companion, the swimming in, in circles. So uh, kind of cool in that regard. My favorites are complicated. Good news, uh, Blue World, and then Hand Me Downs. And uh, then... I did I did actually listen okay. to that. Okay, what, what, what'd you think of it? Not uh, your was, thing? Not, not my thing, but, you know, I mean, like you said, it is powerful because of, mm -hmm. you know, what ends up happening. So but definitely not going to uh, tread on it by any means. So try, I did listen to this last album you have on here as well. Yeah, Laura Marling's Song for Our Daughter, the seventh album. And uh, it's really not for her daughter. It's for an imaginary type right. of daughter. But uh, still, the, the songs hit the same either way, right? Uh, um, Marling uh, stated that it allowed her to offer, quote, all the confidences and affirmations I found so difficult to provide myself. So again, um, you know, always interesting to, to hear from the artists themselves, right? Yeah, for what, sure. Uh, you know, what went behind the recording of this album. Um, mainly accompanied on here, very stripped back production. You got your your piano, your strings right here, and just Laura's beautiful voice and strong songwriting ability on display. My favorites are For You and Alexandra. Yeah, I thought it was a really good album. It would have made my honorable mention. Trey, my last pick, this was like, I wanted to do a 5A and 5B, but you can't do that. Those are not the rules that we do here. You got to pick five. So Spanish Love Songs, Brave Faces, everyone. Their third studio album, their second studio album, Schmaltz, made it on my list. Back then, 86 on Metacritic phase or self-destruction mm. as a sensible career choice. Optimism as a radical life choice. And Routine Pain, it is a great album and comes in with my last. Well, selection. I'm shocked you didn't put the, the Killers in, in your list. Well, now we get to honorable mentions. And the Killers imploding the Mirage. It was back and forth between the Spanish love songs and the Killers. I think imploding the Mirage ends just a little bit weakly. Okay. And that kind of knocked it for me, but... Um, it's right there, and obviously we saw them in concert like three months ago, and they were fantastic. Also, the weekend after hours got a full album review or reaction up of that. Waxahachie, St. Cloud, powerful blossoms, foolish loves, loving spaces. Second time they made my list. Jeff Rosenstock, no dream. All four of his albums have made either our list or our honorable mention. Tame and Paul with a slow rush. He's made every one of my lists. Jesse Ware, what's your pleasure? Excellent. Matt Berenger, Serpentine Prison, the lead singer of the National, coming in there. Fleet Fox Shore, Chris Stapleton starting over his second album. Bob Dylan, Rough and Rowdy Ways. Trey, I'm sure I took some of your honorable mentions. Yeah, you did. I just got a, a few more ladies to highlight. Nora Jones is picking up off the floor. Uh, Fiona Apple, Special the Bolt Cutters, and then Haynes Women in Music 3. Um, I, you know, I listened to, to Fiona and okay. Haynes on there. So. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think uh, looking at this stat is a little bit of a weaker year, but I think it is, uh, but you also have to have the caveat of. COVID obviously striking really yeah. in February, March, that delayed a lot of things, I think. And um, so, you know, with that said, though, still uh, still some strong still releases. Still some strong stuff, and, yeah. It's not 2018, which <laughs> was horrible, so yeah. And so, uh, of course, we'd like to know your favorites from 2020 down in the comments section below and who you have coming out on top on this draft today. And uh, we'll be back soon with uh, 2021. Two. So, two. Two left, boys and girls. Dude, that's it, man. The, uh, the, 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 end, the end is near, and then, it, then it'll be easy for us to just keep yeah. up uh, <laughs> once a year. With don't come list, back so. weekly for that. Come back every day, but don't come back um, weekly. But uh, with that said, man, uh, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see you.